How's it going guys? I'm Fulgerman, your local Brick Built Historian, with another episode of Brick Built History. Today we're taking a look at the ba American Bantam Company's BRC-40 Bantam, or Bantic, depending on the country that it's sent to. Uh, this is a interesting uh, <laughs> uh, vehicle, uh, American vehicle, vehicle that is primarily only used by our allies so it's kind of unknown in America even though it's an American vehicle so anyway uh, this is the Brickmania version and I have the original version that was sold during Red October month and I have the uh, mystery crate version so without further ado let's go into the reviews and go into the history so the very first thing, of course, is the packaging. Uh, this is their like small package. <laughs> uh, you have, you know, your Brick Mania thing, BRC-40 Bantic, World War II command car, Daniel Siskind, Brick Mania, or BKM-2310, skill level three out of five, 190 Lego, Brick Mania, and Brick Arm elements, one minivan. We have the three quarter profile view in color and you have the uh, the driver there with the Papa Shaw in the back, original design by Daniel Siskin. And you have the monochromatic image in the back showing the front of the vehicle. Set that off to the side here. So let's take a look at the original. Uh, a lot of interesting design techniques, including this weird bumper where it's like you have the two jumper plates right here going out to those two I don't even know what this piece is and then going from basically this four to the three to the four you have a three wide uh, grill here with your headlights you have a folding uh, windshield steering wheel in there I have the PPSH loosely in there. You have a shifter because basically every vehicle at this time is manual. So unfortunately, like 90% of people in America today won't be able to drive that. You have the uh, headrests for the two front seat. And then you have this long headrest in the back or like the back part of the seat you have this interesting two by two round piece for the wheel and then you stretch a smooth tire over it and then you put the uh treaded tire on top of that which is very very interesting weird uh technique sometimes it's kind of difficult to get it on right so like this you can kind of see there's a lip and it's like you have to get it on perfectly right or else it won't like look correct then on the bottom here you just have like these pieces for strength this I'm guessing is to simulate the leaf spring suspension that is used on the uh, vehicle and you have a really nice Russian minifigure there with a garrison cap and the Soviet star. Very, very Russian. And then you have the one from the mystery crate. Uh, this is supposed to be an African campaign version of the Bantic with it being British. So very interesting colors. <laughs> uh, whenever it came to the African campaign, which I maybe sometime will do a whole video on the African campaign because it is a very interesting campaign, especially since like in the beginning, the generals thought it was going to be like a chessboard for the new tanks and vehicles they had. So you could basically, as long as you had like the superior tanks and all that, you should be able to easily beat anyone in the desert. And it turned out to be a lot worse than they 
planned and a lot of people would suffer from that. But either way, I'm going off track. It's literally the same design. Nothing is different other than the color. You have some printed pieces like the Rhino here, which I should have done some research into what the Rhino means. Uh, you have the diamond on the bottom here. The driver has a garrison cap. Uh, the officer here has a uh, has a normal officer's hat. And then I forgot what the Scottish, I call it the Scottish cap, the, the golfer hat. <laughs> uh, I forgot what that's called. And then this guy is sporting a SMLE, perfect caliber with a bayonet. So very, very cool. And it has the same functions as the other one, just a pretty color. So there are some techniques in here that are a little difficult, especially those wheels. But after you get a hang of it, it's pretty, pretty simple. Nice little small kit. Uh, and it's, you know, just something that uh, you can just have on your, uh, have up on your shelf and you can just look at it. Especially if you have some Africa stuff. Like I have the Stug, I got the Feisler Storch, uh, the German staff car and hopefully I get some more. Oh yeah, the 251. Uh, but I need, I need some more Africa stuff. Either way, let's go on to the slight amount of history into these things. So the BRC-40 was made by the American Bantam Company and the America, American Bantam basically was trying to fulfill a quarter ton truck that was simple, reliable, and overall easy to use. It would use a four cylinder Continental 45 horsepower engine that was uh, gasoline powered or petrol for you, anyone outside the United States. And it could reach a top speed of 50 miles per hour. Uh, it was roughly 2,600 pounds, I think, uh, something like that. Uh, but it had a 15 gallon tank and could reach a range of 250 miles. So basically you could go five miles at top speed before it runs out of gas. In total, 2,572 of these would be built uh, basically all of them going out for lend -lease. and they were made between you most of them were made between March of 1941 to December 6th of 1941 and like about 69 of them nice uh, were made as what was called the BRC 60 which was like its predecessor looks very similar to uh, looks very similar to these slightly different but that was its predecessor and then eventually would get to the BRC 40 a lot of the BRC 60s would be retrofitted into the 40 and whenever war came out or whenever America came into war it was found out that American Bantam doesn't really have the production capabilities that was needed, especially for America, who's now facing a two front war in the Pacific and in Europe, well, Af actually Europe slash Africa. So they needed something that was easier to produce and by a company who can produce them. And they would hold a trial between Bantam, G uh, the Ford Motor Company, and the Willie M. Uh, M.A. company and ultimately Willie will, would win and that's where we get this the Willie's Jeep uh, the Willie's Jeep would also incorporate some things by the Ford uh, model but it's really similar to the 
to the Bantam or the Bantic, depending on who you ask. So it's kind of funny how you go from the Bantam to the Willy, which is very, very similar. So, you know, maybe they kind of got screwed up, but it's neither here nor there. Now, Bantam would actually continue to be productive in for America. Uh, they mostly made the T3 trailer, uh, the quarter ton T3 trailer, which is usually pulled by the Willys Jeep. And they also made torpedoes for the Royal Navy. Now, something I thought was interesting when doing the research into this uh, vehicle is that 62 of them was built with four wheel steering basically meaning that the wheels in the front and the wheels in the back uh, would turn so if you turn left then the front wheels would turn like this and the back wheels would turn like this to have a tighter turn radius and this was because of the u.s cavalry and like they built these 62 and they were basically used as normal Bantics by either the British or the Soviet Union. Uh, the Soviet Union, in particular, absolutely loved these things. They really did enjoy the Bantic more than they enjoyed the Jeep, which is, you know, of course the Soviets would like something that everyone else doesn't really particularly. Like, it's not that they don't dislike it. It's like, you know, it's not getting the praise that the Willys Jeep does by everyone else. <laughs> and the other very interesting thing I've learned about this is that it doesn't have a gas pedal. So the Bantam uses a mounted starter button on the floor to start the, the uh, vehicle. And then it has a hand throttle on the dash to control the speed. And I think that's very weird because I mean, for anyone who drives, usually whenever you are driving, you have your foot on the gas pedal and you're pushing the gas pedal down to go fast and then you let go to coast a little bit before you hit the brakes. At least that's what I do. And, you know, whenever you have a handed throttle on the dash, it's like you don't really feel like you have that same smooth transition especially since in this time a, a few quite a few americans know how to drive and the standard for driving is your gas pedals on the right drive or your brake pedals on the left and then you have a clutch on the far left so i guess brake pedal in the middle clutch on the left and that's what most people are used to but the brc40 uses a hand throttle on the dash very weird very weird uh i didn't really see any pictures of how it was actually done i'm guessing it's kind of a, if i were to guess i'd say it's probably kind of like a aircraft throttle where it's like you pull it out or push it in but it, it, it like that is something that's kind of weird for me <laughs> that i didn't even expect something like weird something weird like that to happen so you know I think that's a, an interesting fact worth a like. <laughs> so if you liked this uh, little video, go ahead and slap that like. I know uh, a guy named Max has been asking for this for a very long time, and I've just gotten around to, to making this. So here you go, Max. Here's your video. Uh, comment if you learned anything, or if you want to be like Max and suggest something for me to do a video on because I've got I still got a few things to make videos on and you know I want to know what you guys want to see and subscribe if you want to see more and tell your friends about this if they're into the this kind of stuff like you are so with that said I've been Fulkerman and let's continue to build history <laughs>